A constant is a meaningful name that we can use instead of a value such as a number or text. This may sound similar to a variable which we have covered in the previous lesson. However, unlike a variable, once a constant is defined, its value can't be changed during the execution of our application. So instead of hard coding values within our code, we can use constants. There are three types of constants, intrinsic constants, symbolic constants, and conditional compiler constants. For this course, we will only focus on the first two. Let's start with intrinsic constants. These are system defined or built in constants that are made available for us to use within the VB application courtesy of the object library. Let's go to the object browser, click F2. We can click on all libraries and see which all object libraries we have access to. VBA and Excel will always be in our default selection. Let's select VBA. In the classes section, Let's come down to the color constants module and each member of the color constants module is a constant that represents a color. So for the eight colors given here, instead of using the RGB values directly, we can use these constants instead. So for example, let's change the background color of the cell C3 to blue. We can use the interior.color property of the range object. So this color property needs to be set to an RGB code, but we can use a constant instead. There are two ways to call a constant. We can use the fully qualified path, which starts with the library, which is VBA. Reference the color constants module and select the VB blue constant. This would work, but this constant is also a member of the globals object. So we can refer to it directly. Okay, let's run our code and it's changed to blue. Now this is the same as directly typing in the RGB values using the RGB function. Let's do that. So this statement will give the same result and note RGB is a function which takes in each RGB code and returns a whole number. So let me show you what I mean. That's the number returned to us. And we could use this while setting the property as well. All these three statements give the same result, that is, change the cell color to blue. But if we don't know our color palette values, on first glance, this RGB00255 or even the raw numerical value doesn't really tell us what the color actually is. Using VB blue, however, immediately tells us what color it is. So, this is a pretty good case for using constants in our code. You can explore more constants within the object library or head over to Microsoft Learn where it's well documented as well. The next type of constants are called symbolic constants, which are user-defined constants declared using the const statement. The value of the constant is set at the time of the declaration and cannot be modified later on during the code execution. In the previous section, we talked about the VBA color constants that are available for eight colors. For more colors, we would need to enter in the RGB codes ourselves, or we could define our own constants instead. Let's do that. A lot of the structure of code around declaring constants is very similar to the code when declaring variables. I will highly recommend watching the previous lesson on variables for concepts such as naming convention, assignment of values, and data types. We can declare a constant within the macro procedure or at the top of the module. Let's make some space. If we want the constant to be available throughout the VBA project, that is across all the modules and procedures, then we need to use the public keyword. So public and the const keyword. If you're familiar with variables, you are using const instead of dim. Give the constant a name. Provide a data type using the as clause. And we'll define the data type to be long. So far, you may have noticed the similarities between declaring constants and variables. There is one big difference though. We can't declare and assign a value to a variable within the same code statement. But for a constant, we can. In fact, we have to, since we can't assign a value to a constant once it's declared. So we will use the equal to assignment operator within the declaration statement for the constant equal to, and let's add in a numerical value for orange, which is 42495. And a quick side note, if you're declaring a constant or a variable on the top of the module, or more specifically outside a procedure, then we can't use a function to assign a value. So basically, instead of this literal value, we cannot 
use a function. So this will not work and will throw a compile error. But we can use formulas. For instance, we can calculate this numerical value based on the RGB codes for the orange color. So I'm just going to paste in a formula. We don't need to get into how this formula works. You can read up online about RGB codes if you want. But basically, these are the RGB codes for the color orange. And to emulate the same result of this RGB function, we need to multiply each color code with an offset value. So first we define each offset as a constant and then we can add them to our formula to calculate the numerical color value and assign the output of that formula to the VB orange constant. So let's test this out. Let's first replace the color to orange, run the macro, check the result. That works. So let's comment this out and get back to our original const statement. So far, we have seen how to declare a constant on the project level using the public keyword. If we want to restrict the access just to this current module, we could use the private keyword. Module level constants are private by default. So if we want them private, we don't really need to mention it. On the other hand, though, explicitly stating it makes our code more readable. Let's look at another example to emphasize one point. We should try and avoid using any text or numbers directly within a coding statement. So let's look at the sub. This is the code to open an Excel file on my computer. I have fed in the actual file path into the argument or the workbook's open function. This value is called a hard-coded value or a literal value. As a programmer, reading hard-coded values without context can lead to confusion. We should use constants instead. And one more note out here. A recommendation would be to capitalize the constant name. This would differentiate it from a variable name when we're looking at it in the lines of our code. So what we're going to do is feed in the file path value into a constant and we will declare the constant within the procedure itself. And now instead of the literal value, we can feed in the constant as the argument. Let's run this code and the test file opens. We can even group related constants together into a set called enumerations. There are many built-in enumerations within VBA. Let's go to the object browser. We can click F2 or click on this icon in the standard toolbar. This time, let's select the Excel library. Let's scroll down in the classes window. Each of these yellow two rectangles icon is an enumeration or enum for short. Let's select the Excel paste type enum, which we are going to use in a bit. On the right hand side, we can see the available members within this enum. Each of this member is a constant with a long data type. In fact, the value of every element within an enum, system or user built will always evaluate to a long. Each of these members represents a different option to paste data such as paste values, paste formats, etc. And we can even see the underlying numerical values by clicking on it. Okay, back to Excel. Let's look at an example. We have a data set here with the status of all the system automation runs for the day. What we want to do is copy and paste this data to the bottom of the archive sheet. And just note here, the date is given in number format. So when pasting, we need to paste values only. Let's return to our VB editor. I'm just going to paste in the initial code here. We have a sub prepared for us already. We can go through the code quickly. First, we copy the data range minus the top row from the data set. Then we find the last row or rather the first available row in the archive sheet by adding one to the last row. And now we need to paste our data, which we had copied earlier. We will use the paste special method of the range object. This method can take in an argument. Let's press a space bar to add a space. And we get a list of options courtesy of IntelliSense. This is a list of members in the enumeration paste type, which we saw earlier. And we just want to paste the values. So we will go with Excel paste values, run the macro. Our data has been pasted over. Let's take a minute to think why these enumerations are so useful. By providing a fixed set of options to choose from, the Excel paste type enum is reducing the chance of errors caused by us or the programmer mistyping the option values manually. We can also build our own custom enumerations using the enum statement. We need to place the enum statement at the top of the module. 
Let's start with the word public, which defines the scope of the enumeration. The default scope for enumeration is public, so we don't need to mention it, but we can leave it in there for clarity. Next, we'll use the enum keyword. We are going to make an enumeration that represents each of the automation run statuses, which is past, failed, and paused. So we'll call our enumeration automation status. First, we'll close out the enum using the end statement with the enum keyword. And now we need to add the member names, which will be the name of a constants. We'll name them as per the statuses. So past, failed, and paused. Each of these constants will be assigned a number by default. Past will be zero, and each of the constant after that will increment by one. So let's print out the value assigned to the member paused, which should be zero, one, and then two. Type in the enum name, control space to autocomplete, dot to get our list of constants, choose paused, tab out, run the macro, and we can see that it's been assigned the value two. We can even change the values assigned to each member by adding our own values. So like this, But what we'll do instead is add in some RGB number values. Our eventual goal is going to be to loop over this data and based on each status value, we will change the background color. So if the status is passed, we'll assign the color green, which is given by the value 65280. Just putting in a comment to tell us what that value is. And let's fill in the other values as well. Okay, let's test out our enum. Let's create a new macro. Cell C3 is failed. We will change it to a background color associated with the enum member failed, which is red. Let's type in our enum name and choose the member failed. Run a macro, check the result, and the background color is now red. Let's change it back. Now let's build a more complex code to loop over the data. We haven't covered looping or select case logic in this course yet. So don't worry too much about the code. The main takeaway here is to show how we can use enumerations within our code. To iterate or loop over the data set, we need an iteration variable. We will loop from the second to the last row. We will use a select case statement to choose what color we apply to the cell based on the status values in the column C. If the value in the cell is passed, then we'll change the color to well to the RGB color code that we've assigned to the enum member passed. And similarly, we can add the logic for failed and paused. And that's it. Let's test out our code run. And it works. Another benefit of enums is that they're easy to update. Suppose we want to change the color of paused from yellow to blue. In that case, we just need to update the constant value from yellow to blue. And that's it. No change required within the code itself. Let's run our macro, check our results, and pause this blue now. Great. Constants are named labels for values that we don't expect to change. There are system-defined constants and user-defined constants. Use the keyword const to declare a constant, and we can group similar constants together into a set called enumeration. So far, we've learned about data variables and constants. In the next video, we will deep dive into object variables.